fractures of the humerus. Fractures of the humerus can be classified according to anatomy of the humerus into three parts. Fractures of the proximal part of the humerus, fractures of the shaft of the humerus, and the fractures of the distal part of the humerus. Let's start with the fractures of the proximal part of the humerus, which constitute about 4 to 5 percent of all fractures of the humerus, and is caused by falling down on outstretched hand or during seizure and electric shock. Seizure and electric shock can cause or can establish a fracture of the humerus, proximal fracture of the humerus, by mechanism of exaggerated adduction and internal rotation that happen during these two similar conditions. Too many cases of fracture of the humerus or proximal fracture of the humerus is associated with underlying pathology that caused these fractures. Underlying pathology like osteoporosis after middle age, tumors, and cyst of bone, and many, many other pathologies. As we can see in this x-ray, we have a cyst in bone that caused a fracture of proximal part of the humerus. Okay, so middle-aged or elderly patients are most commonly affected by fractures of the humerus due to the presence of underlying pathologies in this group age in a lot of cases. In adult, this dislocation is more expected with the fracture because high energy trauma is more required than in elderly patient because of the absence of the underlying pathology in most cases in adult. Okay? So, how fracture of the po uh, proximal part of the humerus manifested? The patient comes to you with pain, swelling. The pain sometimes precedes the fracture of the humerus due to the underlying pathology of the humerus. And the swelling can precede the fracture too. Loss of arm and shoulder functions can be present. Okay. A proximal fractures of the humerus is classified according to near classification. So we use near classification to classify the proximal fracture of the humerus. Near the classification classify fractures of proximal part of the humerus into one part fracture, two part fracture, three part fracture, and four part fracture. One part means that there is no displacement as we can see here, there is no displacement. The fracture is impacted and or too near to each other. Two parts means that there are displacement of one part of the head of the humerus. It can be greater trochanter. Okay, so we have here two parts, the greater trochanter and the rest of the humerus. It can be surgical neck fracture. We have the head of the humerus and the shaft of the humerus, two parts, and we have the laser trochanter. So we have the laser trochanter and the rest of the humerus, two parts. Three parts means that we have two displacements and three fragments. Okay, so we have here the greater trochanter the rest of the head of the humerus and the rest of the humerus okay so here we have two lines of fractures the first one is this and this is the second one and the three fragments so these are three parts of fracture we can have a fracture of the lesser trochanter instead of the greater trochanter and of the surgical neck okay so here we have Lesser trochanter, the head of the humerus, and the rest of the shaft of the humerus, a three part. Okay? Four parts mean means also that we have four fragments. Okay? We have four fragments. The greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, the surgical neck are fractured, okay? And we have four fragments the head of the humerus, a greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, 
and the rest of the humerus. Okay, so let's repeat. Near the classification, I classify the fractures of the humerus into one part. Here we have uh, impacted if, uh, if, if fragments of the fracture. Two parts. We have here two parts of uh, two parts of the fracture: the greater trochanter and the rest of the humerus, or the uh, it may be the head of the humerus and the rest of the shaft, or maybe the lesser trochanter and the rest. Okay, three parts. We have three parts from the name. Okay, it could be greater trochanter, the rest of the head and the rest of the shaft. Or the lesser trochanter, the rest of the head and the rest of the shaft, four parts. We have greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, the rest of the head and the rest of the shaft. Okay, this is a classic, a classical type of four part of near classification. Okay, how can we investigate fracture of the humerus? Of course, by X ray. Okay, okay. Here are some X-rays that show us a fracture of the head of the humerus. Okay, this is two types of fracture. Okay, because we have here first and second bony structures. In this X-ray, we can see underlying pathology that caused this fracture of the humerus. Okay, this is a cyst the humerus here we can see part three fractures because we have one part two and three okay one two and three so we have part three according to Nier's classification here we have part two part two Nier's. why because we have the lesser trochanter here and the rest of the humerus here so we have two parts then we have part two CT also may be needed in different or in difficult and different cases from the normal case how can we treat the fractures of the humerus the treatment of fracture of the proximal part of the humerus is according to Nier's classification in part one we have no displacement so we have all the structures of the humerus reduced to each other so we don't have to reduce anything just we have to put a sling and to do some exercises in part two we have two fragments okay we have two fragments so we have to reduce these fragments by close reduction and then fixate it okay close reduction and fixate in part two in part three we can't just closely reduce the structures we have to open reduce the structures and to internally fixate it okay as we can see here we have open reduction and internal fixation of the head of the humerus okay and this is due to part three fracture of the proximal part of the humerus open reduction and internal fixation so in part one there is no need to any reduction just a sling in part two we have two fragments so we have to reduce but we use Close reduction. In part three, we have three fragments, so close reduction is not useful. We have to uh, to do open reduction and to internally fixate the head of the humerus. In part four, we do as in part three, open reduction and internal fixation. A lot of cases, and if this step fails, we have to do prosthetic humerus. We have to put artificial humerus as we can see here in all these points or in all these procedures don't forget neurovascular examination before and after the reduction 
don't forget in your vascular examination before and after reduction and don't forget analgesia of course